screw it. What's going on guys, Night Dark 13 back again, and I'll say this now, last time I walked up this hill I was vlogging, not, I was vlogging portrait, not landscape, so I apologise now for any horrifically shaky hand movement. Um, very quickly, in case you're wondering, basically I've had a couple of meetings today in my, in the old personal life, nothing too bad, but, like travel was. But this is going to be my video for the Austrian Grand Prix. Um, obviously, once again, left horrendously late due to the fact that, you know, I am, as a woman, horrendously unprepared. And to be fair, I only looked at, you know, I watched, I watched the race live. I made my nose but I also had a football match that night so I couldn't really film or anything then because I had to get ready for football but overall quite a there was a lot of sort of exciting moments in the race but your top three was Max Verstappen P1, Kimi Reichen P2 I'd be in Sebastian Vettel P3 now a few of you are going to be wondering what happened to the Mercs for the first time since Spain 2016, there was a double Merck DNF. Um, with both cars just breaking down. But before that had even happened with Lewis, Mercedes had already screwed him over by not calling him under the virtual safety car. Where a lot of other drivers pitted, he didn't. So... Obviously, long and short of it is that kind of screwed him over and he wasn't too pleased. But Mercedes obviously have made a few strategic blunders down the years. Lewis obviously wasn't happy and then the car broke down. But as for other retirements, or well before the race even started, sorry, you had cars running wide and the kerbs and whatever off the track being so severe around. Austria that they're actually breaking bits off the car and to the extent Pierre Gasly ran off and broke his suspension because he hit one of the I think it was one of the sleeping policemen or something but he ran wide and it just it, the car just packed up the suspension was perfect. so he walked through a cobbler nice but overall I mean Vettel was also given a three place grid drop for impeding Carlos Sainz during quali. But overall, I think you look at it and very much it is a case of you have a lot of issues with cars. I mean, there's quite a few breakdowns, but I think the driver of a day has to go to Fernando Alonso who started in the pit lane and in fact came through to finish 8th both Sauber's finished in the points but with Hamilton retiring and to be fair not seeming to enjoy F1 it again brings up the question of should Hamilton is Hamilton going to retire at the end of the year I mean he said in the past he hasn't got the drive to beat Michael Schumacher's 70, uh, 91 race wins which is fair enough for Lewis. But you look at it and he doesn't seem to be enjoying F1 anymore. But obviously with it being the British Grand Prix, I think it'd be quite interesting. I do think Lewis will get pole and I think he'll go on to win. And also, as for you know, as for everything that happens, F1, it's kind of difficult, really. If you look at, you know, if Hamilton retires, who do Mercedes bring in? Because they have Bottas. I mean, Daniel Ricciardo is available at the end of the year, although it's rumoured that he's close to signing a new deal with Red Bull, even though he DNS from this race as well. Um, 
I mean, you could look at Pascal Verline potentially. I mean, Mercedes have a lot of money, so they could even potentially buy a Max Verstappen out of his contract. But you look at look at the drivers. You can't really see Vettel. Well, Vettel will start Ferrari. I think that's confirmed for next year that he'll be at Ferrari. But there's a lot of question marks surrounding Kimi Raikkonen who potentially is going to be replaced by Charles Leclerc, who's done okay at Sauber this year. And I mean, you look at it and... I do think Kimi might be on his way out of Formula One. I mean, he is a world champion. But he doesn't seem to be as... I mean, he's got podiums every sort of... You know, he's got podiums every, sort of, he's got a really long streak of podiums. But you have to question again whether he wants to be there. So, I mean, you look at it and you say, oh, well, you know, he's got Vettel as a teammate and whatever, and that perhaps is a bit of a, a bit of a harsh yardstick, so to speak because Vettel is a fantastic driver and of course is challenging for the World Drivers' Championship this year. But, I mean, I look at... Do I think Leclerc would be a good fit for Ferrari? Well, yes. I mean, he looks like he was sort of drawn from a set or a similar mould to Jules Bianchi. And Bianchi was a fantastic driver and I think... He quite possibly would have been in Ferrari by now. But I think Leclerc is cut from a very similar cloth. So I can see Leclerc go into Ferrari, but of course that opens up a seat at Sauber. And who do I think that's going to go to? Well, quite possibly it'll go to another Ferrari young driver. Could even see a return to Daniel Kvyat. He is, I think he's reserve and test driver for Ferrari. So potentially, you could see him come back. Um, also, with Haas both finishing the points, and Grosjean's finishing fourth to get his first points of the season, it seems impossible to say that. He's been doing really... He's been in the points a lot this year. But at the same time, hasn't he hasn't scored any points to this point. But the question that that raises is, should he still be in the car for next year? And... Again, raises the question, well, who do you bring in? And potentially you could see the likes of Antonio Giovinazzi. I've, I'd be quite happy to see him back in Formula One. But, I mean, if Grosjean gets let go by Haas, I can see him going to Sauber. Because he is, I think Grosjean is linked one way or another with Ferrari. So I could see him going to. Sauber and being the lead driver if Leclerc does go to Ferrari. Also, there's a lot of question marks in the air about whether Alonso is going to stay or not. If he does go, McLaren have been linked with Daniel Ricciardo, which is a bit of a... I don't know, I don't think it would happen. Van Dorn as well, he retired. I don't think Van Dorn... I mean, it's hard for him, he's... <coughs> Excuse me. His teammate, <coughs> to arguably one of the best drivers in the sport, in Fernando Alonso. But even then, he doesn't seem to be anywhere near. So, I mean... Again, you can sort of sit there and say what you want, but Antonio Giovinazzi's lurk. There's so many drivers, and then, of course, McLaren have Lando Norris, who came in, who Toro Rosso came in for and had their move rejected, which looks like Brendan Hartley will be gone very, very soon. And, of course, if he goes, then you can see Carlos Sainz coming back to Red, uh, Toro Rosso. If Ricardo leaves... 
it's who gets to see out of science and Gasly and you get the feeling it'll go to Gasly which will piss science off and then he'll move elsewhere maybe two halves or whatever but last piece of news and this is just rumours at this point but it's a bit sad is that next year could be the final Silverstone Grand Prix obviously it's a historic venue prices are rocketing to host the Grand Prix and Silverstone said well we don't know if we can afford it after 2019 so I can't look at it and think, well, what's going to happen there then? Because you've obviously, the German Grand Prix has its contract up this year. And it's down to Liberty Media. They've said they want to keep the historic tracks on the calendar. Obviously, I think the German Grand Prix is at Hoppenheim this year. Um, but... Yeah, I hope Silverstone stays. It's one of my favourite tracks. Obviously, I am British, so I'm going to be slightly biased. But I don't think it will go. I think they'll sort something out. But yeah, uh, on to my top three for, or the top five for qualifying. I'm going to go Mercedes 1 2, so I'm going to go Hamilton and Bottas. Vettel third. Ricardo fourth. Raikkonen fifth. Uh, then for the race top five, I'm going to go Hamilton, Vettel, Ricardo, Bottas, and Verstappen with Raikkonen finishing in sixth. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave this video here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.